Commodore were a key part of the early computer market with some key business machines and of course home computers like the Commodore 64 and the Amiga. But we're going to take a look at the 64's predecessor, the VIC-20. Right, specifically uh, this VIC-20, <laughs> which isn't in the best of shapes. Um, I got it in an auction and no idea if this is working or not. But anyway, we'll get there in a second. Um, so first of all, a bit of data about this. Uh, it was released in 1980 as a low-cost home computer to complement the PET line of business machines. It had 5K of RAM, obviously expandable, uh, and it used the PET 6502 CPU, running at either 1.02 or 1.1 megahertz, depending on your region. Its graphic chip is called the VIC chip, and it was capable of 176 by 184 resolution with 16 colors, although there were cabinets around the colors, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so those specs are, or a lot of the, the, the details about the machine are very similar to the C64. Obviously, the C64 improved quite a lot. Um, yeah, the... I mean, the styling, obviously, is, is very similar. The keys are similar. In fact, one of the things I have already fixed, and I did it because it didn't, I didn't think it was going to be a big job, so it wasn't worth kind of showing on, on video. Turned out to be a lot more involved than I thought it was, so it would have been good, but I've, I've done it already, is I replaced the two key um, because the well, this one was missing it entirely and the stalk was broken and everything. Uh, and that's been replaced with an early Commodore 64 version instead. They are the same. Um, yeah, I'll get to... I'll show you what I did on this because it is, like I said, more involved than I assumed it was going to be. So, yeah, they're very similar designs, just the C64 is obviously much enhanced. Um, the side even is pretty similar, although there are variations of this with different power connectors. This one looks very, very much like the, the Commodore 64. The back is kind of similar as well, uh, to the point where some of the uh, later versions of the VIC-20, the cases had a little bulge there where it could be reused, the top bit of the case could be reused for Commodore 64s. So quite similar. One of these is the video. There's no, <laughs> it's got no writing on it to say which one is which. So I'll actually have to look that up um, because obviously I'm gonna have to try and get video out of this. I'm hoping it's the same lead as the Commodore 64 because that would be very, very handy. Um, yes, so. Don't know if this is working. Like I said, got it as part of an auction and when I opened this up for the first time, uh, first of all, quite a few of the uh, the plastic pegs that hold the case together were broken. Um, somewhere around here, and maybe I've knocked it off. I have, hold on. Yeah, one of the stalks was still in there, so that's been broken off by, uh, well, I mean, the plastic gets brittle over time, and if the people tighten it too hard, people assume you have to kind of really tighten the screws for cases. You don't, you just tighten them up so, you know, you, you, to you feel them, uh, kind of hitting the, the case and then just leave them. It don't need to be massively tight. Uh, so that's been over tightened and the brittle plastic has given way. So we need to fix that using um, some kind of resin possibly. Uh, maybe the maybe the resin and baking powder mix that some people use. But I'll probably just try resin first because why not? Um, and also there's another one that's missing as well. And yeah, the I said the processor was missing when I opened it. So that kind of suggests it's been used as a parts machine. Um, so we have no idea if this is going to work. Uh, so anyway, there's the, the serial number. This one was made in West Germany. Um, yeah, I mean, we've only got one screw left, so we'll be very careful opening it. It's one screw, but it's also clipped at the, uh, at the back as well. There you come. A one solitary screw. I guess at least it means we don't have to worry about putting things in the right place. And this will then kind of hinge backwards and then we can take it off. It's connected via this cable which just comes out of this single pin headers here. And also the power light which just comes out of here. So, yeah, okay, so in terms of this. So I figured that I just have to take this keyboard apart and uh, then replace the key and, and that is basically true except there's also these bits here which are wired in so i think this is the yeah it's the shift lock button which has got obviously it's got a different characteristic because it stays down uh that's kind of basically a caps lock style thing uh so i had to desolder these first as well which uh was interesting but um not terrible but it just was a little bit more involved and probably would have been a little bit more interesting than i thought it was going to be anyway let's put this safely to one side 
uh, and lift up this like cardboard uh, RF shielding, which is at least nicer than having all the metal stuff that's hard to get out. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it's not massively dissimilar to the Con 64. It's a bit sim more, it's a bit simpler. We've still got this bit here underneath shielding, which there you go. That holds. Uh, I think that's the Vic chip. Pretty sure that's the Vic chip. Um, none of these capacitors seem like they've gone, um, but again, sometimes they go when you first power them up. But we'll see. So uh, that all looks good. There, the Vic's there, and it's, it's plugged in. All of these are here, the ROMs and stuff. Um, all the memory chips are in place. Uh, yeah, the only thing missing was the processor, and I got a good a well off a friend off of Twitter, and uh, and that's been replaced. The fuse seems good, so it's not had a fusible event, which is I guess good. See this? This looks all right. I don't see any particular bulging or any kind of fluids or stuff. So yeah, I mean. There's nothing obviously bad with this. <laughs> but we need to work out how to get power into this thing. So we're going to have to kind of find... I mean, we can do some of this ourselves. We can work out where ground is on this on this connector here. Um, but really, we should just look it up. It's, it's a lot safer just to look this stuff up. So uh, I think we will do that. And uh, I will get back when I've got a diagram. Right, as you can probably see, the... Uh, the case is back on the VIC-20, and there's a reason for that. Basically, it's the old ones with the two pins that only need 9 volts. This is more complex, but also easier, because you can just use a Commodore 64 power supply. So, that's kind of handy. <laughs> so I think what we'll do is, first of all, we're just going to try turning this on and see what happens, if we get a power light or not. If not, then obviously we're going to have to go through and actually take a look at stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure the fuse is okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I tested the fuse. So if this doesn't work, then it's something more extreme. Oh, <laughs> okay, the power light is already on. So good sign. Now, the bad part is I've also learned that the lead I've got, which is for my 64C, will not work on this because it has a different connector. So I have to work out the pin out to get a composite out, but it's fine because it means we could just use our standard two bits of metal approach, patent pending, uh, to get some, uh, some data out of this. So I just need to find some crocodile clips and two bits of metal back again soon. Okay, so unfortunately it's not fully clear sailing. Uh, doing a composite on this is fairly easy. Um, on the back, the uh, five pin, six pin, five pin? Anyway, the smaller of the two ports on the back, the less pins, is the video port, and the very bottom pin is ground, and the one, if you look at the back of it, to the right of it, is the composite signal. So uh, as long as you don't get any of the, at the top, because one of those is five volts, you're fine. Uh, but unfortunately, if we turn it on, we just get a black screen and the OSSC goes haywire trying to find a proper signal. So, yes, that is not working. So, I think mean, what we'll do is, I've gone through and I felt all the chips, and apart from the VIC chip, none of them are getting particularly hot. Um, I think the VIC chip does get quite warm but I think the first thing to do is we're just going to try oh, hello. <laughs> I think the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to try uh, and do the usual fallback which is just replace some of the caps if we've got the right values because why not and then we'll test some voltages around the board right let's turn this off well I just uh, we don't know if this is the problem yet or not I haven't tried it but I've just taken the uh, CPU back out because I was going to put some contact cleaner in there because I put the CPU in, it had been open to the air for a while, and I discovered, if you can just see that, you can focus, anyway, you can see better there, two of the legs flattened, so I wasn't very careful putting the, that in, so I need to very carefully straighten those, or I've got a repair job on the hand, so uh, yes, 
wasn't going to work too well like that. Right, back in a sec. Okay, so we've recapped it. Um, we fixed that, oh well hopefully we fixed that chip. I'm looking, it seems okay now. Uh, so I guess we just try to turn it on and see what happens. We also need to plug it in of course. And let's try that again. Okay, as expected, the VIC-20 was not quite as simple as we uh, as it could have been. So, we've ruled out caps. Uh, that chip definitely looks like it's in place now, but that might not even be the right CPU. There are several variants of the 6502. Um, I got that one from someone who certainly knows about VIC-20s more than I do. You might make a mistake, so that's one thing we'll have to look into as well. Um, but we'll have to just do some, some basic diagnostics, which we haven't got time to do in this episode, so this will unfortunately be yet another series. So uh, three series are going at once. <sighs> yeah, we need to <laughs> start closing some of these off. We're still waiting for parts for the sword. We've got some even more work, more work to do on the twin. There's something even more complex gone that's wrong with it. Um, the X1, the, the normal Sharp X1, that's done. That's that's working. We got uh, the GoTech working with it. We got a video signal of it, so that's pretty good. That one's closed down. And now the VIC-20, which I don't think the VIC-20 has been as long because it's um, it, there are there is at least lots of information about this in English on the web, so it, it shouldn't be too hard to work out what's going wrong. One of the things I want to get a hold of is effectively like the dead the, the dead cart, so it's similar to what the um, the C64's got, which will hopefully give us some more information. But we're going to investigate memory and stuff and see if we can get some replacement memory chips. First of all, because they are ones that do tend to go, uh, and we can then do piggyback tests as well if need be. But yeah, <laughs> we'll talk about that next time. Um, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit like. If you really like the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't like the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. Uh, we've got our membership thing you can join from, from $1, uh, and that just gives you like advanced access to videos and behind the scenes stuff depending on the tier you buy it it's all um it's all down there just press the join button and it'll tell you all about it um and don't forget hit the bell icon as well so you can be told when we release new videos including the next one in this lot so uh see you next time the present is horrible the future looks bleak remember our childhood to get us through the week we're getting re-enthused Back to the past and the things we used We all know that our pasts were great Escaping the things that today we hate Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused